Hey, and welcome to um, Tuesdays, I believe it's Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday's edition of One Moron's Opinion. Um, I was, I was going to, I was, I'm going back to reporting uh, the news socialist and uh, non, uh, non-DSA or uh, non, uh, anything that has anything in relations to the Democratic Party or Republican Party. But I went on Google, not Google, I don't do Google, Bing, uh, I guess the same difference nowadays. Um, and I looked up, I was looking up socialist uh, candidates because I wanted to uh, show, show them off and maybe you know, wherever you're at. Um, if you're watching this, which I thank you, uh, I thank you for doing. Um, and I thank um, my current subscribers and hopefully I'll be able to grow more. Uh, for my YouTube channel, as well as um, Odyssey, where I'm also going to be putting this on. Anyway, um, I don't think I would have ever thought I would see a DSA Libertarian Socialist Caucus. Uh, I never, I didn't know this existed as far as the part goes, but I decided to look it up anyway see who we are. Libertarian Socialist Caucus is an organization of members of the Democratic Socialists of America who believe that libertarian socialist values are the fullest embodiment of the Democratic Socialist vision. We cherish the DSA's status as a multi-tendency mass socialist organization I wish to create the space within the DSA to discuss and organize for the development of socialism beyond the state. Let's see. Okay. The, oh, wait. Okay. Okay. Bottom of play there. We take libertarian socialism to encompass those parts of the socialist movement, including the, uh, the syndicalist. Okay. A council communist, anarchist, uh, cooper- cooperativist. Okay. <laughs> Try to say that five times fast. And municipalist. Okay. Uh, I think in the pissed part. Anyway, among many others, which have historically seen the surest path to socialism as residing in the creation of independent institutions and civil society that gives the working class and ordinary people direct power over their lives. We believe in the socialist principles of common ownership and that worker control over workplaces can only be advanced through creation and support of worker-owned firms, radical trade trade unions, workers, and neighborhood councils, uh, popular uh, assemblies, uh, not a pop, but popular assemblies, credit unions, and alternative banking systems, community land trust, and other direct democratic non-state institutions. The power of socialist parties and socialist governments should be subordinate to those who decentralize grassroots tra- uh, formations. The Libertarian Socialist Caucus operates on three shared principles we see as inseparable from Libertarian Socialism. Freedom refers to the positive capacity of all individuals and communities for for self-determination. We believe that the freedom enjoyed by individuals is an inalienable social good and can only be strengthened through solidarity and democracy. Solidarity refers to understanding that all oppressed people, both the economically exploited and the politically marginalized, share a common struggle towards a free and equal society. We aim to organize our movements accordingly, providing mutual aid and support to one another and deferring to initiative of those most de- affected by decisions on the principle that an injury to one is an injury to all. Democracy refers to collective decision making free from a hierarchy, uh, domination, and coercion. Democracy is a social relation between free individuals that should not be reduced solely to institutions or elections. 
We believe that democracy is always a work in progress to be altered or improved by communities according to their needs. Uh, in accordance with these three fundamental values, the, liber the Libertarian Socialist Caucus is suspicious of centralized forms of governance and decision-making processes that undermine freedom, solidarity, and democracy. Instead, we wish to promote the ability of individuals and communities to set their own priorities both inside and outside the DSA. Governing authority is illegitimate in itself and can only be justified if it, de if it is delegated by and subordinated to a democratic assembly. It is our belief that our political institutions must be held to the highest standards of accountability, transparency, and direct democ democratic recall. We believe this vision can only be realized through the abolition, excuse me, abolition of classes, common ownership of the means of production, and a dem democratic management to meet the needs of all. Our particular vision of libertarian socialism society and the specific path we intend to take uh, to go there will emerge out of the discussions and activities of uh, the SC, uh, S, uh, sorry, LSC itself. We believe radical democ democracy, uh, damn, English is not my second language, uh, democracy, there we go, is an ongoing participatory process of deliberation and renegotiation and collective self-determination. It is for the, purpose, uh, the people themselves to decide what the world they wish to live in to be, or is to be. Our inability to describe, uh, to describe the precise contours of the, of the liberated society is rooted in the simple fact that democracy is inherently a work in progress continuing through, uh, continue. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, continually created and created and created by his uh, participants. In short, not so short. Well, wherever uh, domination domination exists, uh, of bosses over workers, all men over men, uh, women, and gender nonconformist. Of states over subjects of whites over people of color and of human society over the rest of humane yeah humane no, human society you know uh, over the rest of the web of life we seek to replace it with equal equality cooperation love and mutual respect ours is a vision of total liberation and not liberation not just in some far-flung revolutionary future but here and now that is interesting. I had to look more into these people. Hmm. Anyway, so yeah, check them out. Uh, I guess DSA slash LSC. I'm kind of, yeah, I had to let this soak in and kind of see if there's anything on, on YouTube about them. But anyway, uh, secondary thing. Uh, this would be the Green Party candidates for the moment. I uh, guess Bart Everson for a new Arlene City Council at large. Uh, Duckett Freeman announces campaign for Lansing City Council. Fish crash campaign announcement. Okay. Uh, okay. So, yeah, this is from, let's see, new, okay, doesn't even say, I don't think it says, maybe it does. Patricia Kane, there we go. Patricia Kane, uh, I guess, is running for, um, or is about to run for something in Connecticut? Uh, yeah, New Haven. Okay, so let's see. And we also have Henry Connolly announces candidacy for PA con uh, Congressional District Number One. Uh, this guy, I was trying to get in with him, but F it. Uh, Cam Gordon, I believe he's okay, Minnesota. For some reason, I had a, I had a thought that he was in, uh, in Connecticut somewhere, but maybe but I, was, I was wrong about that. Anyway. Uh, let's see, uh, Dominique uh, Faison, a Green Party candidate, but um, okay, I guess she is running uh, in where is it? B -b 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 New Jersey, apparently. Uh, okay, so check her out as well. This guy, uh, let's see, I guess she's running for Queens uh, Council member. Uh, will uh, will Green uh, will Queens elect New York's first Green Party Council member? 
This is Edwin De Jesus, a 24 year old filmmaker and activist. Let's see what else we have going on here. Um, Green Party candidate hopes to shake up Pittsburgh Council. Again, obviously, this is a while back, but obviously, it's not done yet. So, there you go. Uh, let's see. Connor for PGH.com. Yes, others, evidently. Now, I know there's a couple of one is one is in uh, Texas and one another one is in uh, PA. Uh, okay, so Sebastian. Okay, you can, I'm pretty sure you guys can see this. Uh, Sebastiani, or however you say her last name, I apologize for messing, murdering her in that last name, but Marlene, I'll just say. I guess she's running. Um, let's see, where is she running at? Does he say? Uh, but, 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 but. Okay, uh, I'm not really saying it, unfortunately, but you can go out to uh, gp.org and look and look them up as far as the park goes. This is Joshua Bradley for uh, Rally Workers, uh, Rally uh, City Council. And you also have oops, uh, Samuel Rose for uh, Schenectady, or some to that effect. Um, where is that at? Schenectady. Well, for some reason, I want it in New York, but I could, I could be wrong about that. Let's see, what does it say? Uh, okay. Either way, you can look all the all these people up, and I guess there's more. I know about um, Madeline Hoffman. She's, she is running for uh, for uh, governor in New Jersey. She has a running mate as well. Look, uh, look them both up. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I guess uh, according to this, they have um, six candidates, basically. Uh, okay. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, as soon as you know that story. Okay. Anyway, so uh, here's some from the, uh, the Press and Journal. I think that's what it's called. Uh, Extinction Rebellion holds funeral possession procession for wildlife. This is more uh, Mark Kearns a couple of days ago. Extinction Rebellion stages a wildlife funeral procession complete with a low drum roll and coffin bearing the words wildlife uh, RIP. Several of the protesters wore animal face masks and other carried large fake skeletons of species, including an orangutan, or rhinoceros, rhinoceros uh, for the Midland March from the Iberness Town Hall to Falcon Square. Uh, NHS Homeland Bank nurse Simon, uh, Simone McClarty and an XR member since. 2019 said, excuse me, the uh, group wanted to create a piece of street theater that would make a lasting impression. He said, in quotes, you, should, you could see by people's expressions that they looked quite moved by it. We haven't changed the world because there's not, there's not that many people in Ivernus, but it helps. Excuse me. But it helps uh, helps us get our point across, uh, of which there are so many. Exxon members have been drawing attention to rising sea levels this summer. The climate activists took part in performances, including an uh, Edwardian Tea Party, to highlight sea level rise ahead of G7 summit in June. The climate crisis is also playing out. Uh, across domestic uh, politics with Nic Nicola Sturgeon calling on the UK government to re reassess oil and gas licenses already issued, including the controversial Gamb Cambo development near Shetland. The first minister had previously stopped short of unequivocally opposing the proposed development. Uh, Mr. McClurdy uh, said he joined uh, XR because he was Concerned that it was a public health issue. Climate change is going to increase the number of zoonotic diseases where animals carry harmful germs that can spread to humans like SARS, including COVID and MERS and Ebola, all these kinds of diseases. The more climate chaos there is, the more we will see on sea of pandemics. Uh, there is definitely a public health issue in the long term. Grouse and shouting is among the other. Was it grouse? Yeah, grouse shooting, shooting. There we go. Not shouting, but shooting 
is among the other causes taken up the XR group who are calling on land owners to take uh, advantage of tree planting gra uh, grants that are available. Okay, why do and let's see, apparently Trudeau of Canada has triggered a uh, election in midst of pandemic's fourth wave. If memory serves me right, the primaries for the Democratic uh, um, election of 2020, uh, they forced it uh, same same way. They, uh, they, if memory serves me, who was it? Who was the, who was the chairman of the DNC at that time? I forgot his name. Um, but the guy had decided to uh, uh, threaten um, a lot of the, I want to say Midwest states, uh, to uh, if, if they had postponed their primaries in order to um, in order to get people to stay inside lockdown, that is, um, that he that he would take the DNC would take the those states uh, delegates or yeah delegates, forcing a lot of them to. One, take them to court, and unfortunately, uh, the, the, I think those same states lost that, uh, lost those court cases, uh, forcing them to hold the primaries. Um, pretty much only candidate that was running for president at that time that called for a halt in primaries was Green Party candidate um, Howie Hawkins. Uh, he was saying that uh, they need to halt the primaries as far, as far as I remember anyway. You can go back then and, and see if that that's if if he's saying if he said exactly that or if I'm trying to paraphrase. He was saying that they need to uh they, they need to uh, uh shut down uh trace track and try to see where this is where this has come from and all this stuff. At that time we didn't really know we still don't really know. Uh, there's speculation that it came from uh, from a lab in Wuhan. There's speculation that it came from a wet market. Um, on myself, I do the the evidence is showing that it did come from a lab, whether it be accidental or it was. Um, oh, what was that? Oh, I heard a, a genome. I'll just say, I'll I'll just try to say like a genome uh, transfer sort of thing between a animal. Reservoir and human reservoir. You know, blood. Uh, I'm guessing this would be the blood, uh, the uh, uh, the human, uh, the human blood bloodstream. I'll just say in animal bloodstream. What is that called? I literally forgot what the heck was called. Anyways, um, so yeah, so Dr. Dr. Fauci and uh, and uh, since then uh, and uh, uh, Ron Rand Paul have gone into a lot, uh, saying that. Now, first of all, I think uh, Dr. Paul uh, was saying at that time that he suspected that it may, that there's more proof coming out coming out saying that it came out of the lab. Whereas Fauci, uh, from what I can listen, from what I've seen and listened to, he's trying to defend the funding for for the with the NIH or some uh, where where he's the chairman of the whole thing. And also the money man. So uh, if, if funding is cut for the program that he's in charge of, obviously he loses a lot of money. So I think uh, him not admitting whether or not uh, coronavirus came from uh, the lab in Wuhan uh, that was funded by Dr. Fauci's uh, organization um, through, I think, other grants, obviously. Um, I think that he's trying to like min minimize that kind of damage. Uh, there's been a lot of other, a lot of other uh, medications that have come out or supplements that have come out to work for this. Uh, if I can get that up here, I, and actually this is kind of interesting right here though. Um, a lot of the things that, and I'm not trying to be a conspiracy theorist here at all. Um, I'm just trying to. I I become kind of obsessed over this uh, the last three or four days. Uh, now, apparently, um, according to this is the FDA government government thing, um, and let's see what that was hard for me to explain because this is the only part that kind of makes uh, is kind of like what what brings up the point here. Um, they 
the okay so let's see continue non-binding recommendations okay no um where is that at uh, bah, bah, bah. Okay, okay yeah so this is like the emergency action thing i don't know if you guys know what the heck i'm talking about but anyway but no um there there are like zinc and other things on nature see what the heck uh, i had a couple of things up um yeah, I'm not sure if, uh, if I got that. Uh, anyways, my point being is the fact that there are cases for different other alternatives uh, for treatments for COVID. And in order for the big corporation, the pharmaceutical industry, to get that quick funding, uh, the president had to do the emergency uh, FDA approval thing. Um, let's mind get to that. Um, so let's see. Yeah, uh, recom uh, recommending effective. Oh no, that's not it either. I got it. Um, anyways, the point being is the fact that uh, the only way that the FDA can approve or kind of emergency approve, uh, like the COVID uh, vaccine was uh, without any without any testing, is they had to enact the emergency thing. However, uh, because Merck apparently uh, has known about not zinc, but another, another, um, another thing is it I'm not. One of those things, you know. I apologize for the delay. <laughs> Let's try and get to it da, 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 on my other computer here. Um, let's see. Boop. Okay, so let's see. Uh, oh, for heaven's sakes. Okay. Yeah, so there uh, the 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 um, alternative is the ivermectin. I don't know if I can pronounce this right. Uh, ivermectin. Uh, basically, it's a it's a viral uh, thing uh, as well as zinc, and it was been tested in like several different countries. But I think in order for in order for funding to be enacted for this, they had to uh, they, they they had to uh, say. There's no alternative or no other, no other way of of a of a other method or other uh, ways of uh, solving this. So they had so they had to do that part, and so a lot of these. Think, uh, okay, so as the FDA has authorized the emergency use of the product, including the product's name and explanation of its intended use. So in other words, patents. Uh, of the significant known and potential benefits of risk of the emergency use of the product and extended uh, extent to which such benefits and risk are unknown and, and of available alternatives and their benefits of risk. So even though there's other types of medication or supplements out there uh, as alternatives, in order to, I guess, concoct this whole thing, um, they had this whole emergency uh, emergency use act or something, well, whatever it is, as far as the actual term, uh, name for it. But let's see. Duh. Let's see. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Continue non buying recommendation, information recipients, if they authorize emergency use of the product. Yeah. Uh, one of the significant no, uh, known and potential benefits and risks associated with the emergency use of the product. And of uh, the extent and which to which such benefits and risk are unknown, uh, they have so yeah. So apparently, it's the combination of zinc and the and the name I, I have put out there momentarily ago. Um, that's the alternative. But these drug companies can't uh, come up with different ways of making money based on the patents because the medication. Not, I keep saying medication. Um, the 
alternative uh, supplements out there like the uh, like zinc and like the um, what's that called again? <laughs> uh, 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 the I V E R M E C T I N because I can't pronounce them. I can't. I can't pronounce it for the life of me. Anyway, so let's see. Yeah, but the so I could find the other thing for it. Uh, see, so yeah, one uh, one good place to to uh, one good doctor really to follow on this is a Dr. Campbell, uh, Dr. Um, what the heck is his first name? Uh, just say uh, Dr. Campbell, uh, YouTube or uh, or um, uh, Instagram, he's on also, and other people too. Uh, and it was a Brett, what the heck is his name? Um, uh, Brett Weinstein, I believe his name is. Uh, he was a professor at Evergreen, uh, uh, Evergreen College in Washington State, and other. And he's he was he's been Joe Rogan, talking about this. Uh, I think he was just going to YouTube and look up Joe Rogan and uh, Brett uh, Weinstein, and it'll come up with a few things. I think it's like a three hour, three and a half hour thing. Anyway, so again, I'm not suggesting that. Um, those work. I'm saying those are alternatives and it's something to look into. That's all. Anyway, let's see. And from what, from what I can tell, uh, YouTube tends to uh, demonetize and other things. The good thing about me is the fact that I'm not monetized. I don't have enough uh, subscribers. So if you want to know more about what I want to say and other stuff like that, then you should probably go to Odyssey because that's where I'll be at. Odyssey and um, as an Odyssey and on Calvin Taylor dot su uh, uh, dot com and also on uh, BitChute, uh, IGPS News on there as well. So anyway, uh, let's see what else. Let's see what is this? Oh, okay. I guess this would be more the uh, MMT portion of things. Uh, let's see, so ah, where's that? White House Fed inflation and flow of funds for August 2021, and also just to talk of financially, just so I get that uh, with there too. Uh, the private domestic sector balance increased by over 30 billion or 308 billion or plus billion in July 2021, thanks to federal government fiscal support and commercial bank credit creation. The change rate also rose. Uh, the credit creation from commercial banks was stronger. At 20, uh, 72 uh, billion plus, well up from last month. Looking forward, rising we, uh, world uh, micro, excuse me, uh, macro and national and seasonal fiscal flows point to a rise, rising market into the rest of the calendar year. Inflation is indeed transitory, with, with lower rates for longer and presenting no need to raise interest rates, which would in any case, add to inflation and not reduce it. The one trillion infrastructure package looks like it is, uh, looks like it is through the through and wait. The uh, one uh, one trillion infrastructure package looks like it is through, and we can now hope for 3.5 trillion reconciliation package to come after it has propelled um, markets forward. Uh, the purpose of this article is to examine the USA sectoral uh, flows for July 2021 and assess the likely impact on markets as we advance into August. This is a pertinent as the change in the fiscal flow rate has an approximately one month lag, uh, lagged impact on asset markets and is a useful investment forecasting pool. So let's see. We have GCX and Otherwise, uh, let's see for 420, <laughs> um, 738, which was the Fed Gov billions. So, uh, 738, then bank credit uh, went in billions, 380.20. Net exports was at minus 36.3. Um, see, of course, it was. We are locked down. Uh, so let's see. Bank credits was minus 35. Uh, yeah, of course, again, lockdown. Uh, let's go all the way down and see for this month or last month, excuse me, 
uh, 301 billion uh, in uh, in FedGov, um, 72.6, I believe, in bank, and minus 65.2 uh, for net export, which is 308.37 uh, P equals G plus C plus X, which I, I could be wrong about this, but it could be uh, what, purch uh, purchase, wait. I'm still kind of new at this part. Uh, public uh, and government uh, plus credit plus exchange. I'm guessing um, it's 308.37. So the change from month to month uh, is 94.59 percent. Okay, so private, domestic uh, sector, so private, the federal, and then okay, yeah, okay. Credit creation. All right, there we go. <laughs> external sector. Okay, my bad. It was external sector on that one. Uh, the latest figures show that we can expect a stronger stock market performance in August, given that we have both a nominal and rate of change increase in the private domestic sector balance. From the sector balance ta uh, table above, we see that from uh, for July of this year, we have a positive nominal inflow of three hundred eight billion plus into the private domestic sector and the positive change rate uh, 94 plus percent uh, month over month for markets the change rate tends to be more important than the headline number the 308 billion uh 308 plus billion to make up uh, the 301 point billion injection of funds from the federal government plus a 20, 72 plus billion of credit creation for commercial banks and less the uh, minus 65 plus billion that flowed to foreign banks accounts at the Fed in return for Im imported goods and services, aka the trade deficit, the imported real goods and services did add to the capital stock and will lead to future productivity uh, gains. After all, we are receiving real goods and services in return for dollar entries keyed into bank accounts by the Fed and trading fiat for real uh, objects. That is how you win at trade. The table below shows that the overall federal expenditures were still large in July, but a minus 10% increase from uh, last month. Bank credit creation was so much was much better than the last month and was 72 billion plus. The external account was steady and the federal government currency so, uh, sovereign uh, contribution almost doubled. The CBO made the following statement concerning July 2021 uh, budgetary results. Okay, so they said. Um, the federal government incurred a deficit of $301 billion in July 2021. CBO estimates that $238 billion more than the shortfall in July 2020 outlays in July of both years were affected by shifts in the timing of certain federal payments that otherwise would have been due on August 1st, which fell on Wednesday each Wednesday, excuse me, uh, on a weekend each year. Those payments were made in July. If not for those shifts, the deficit in July 2021 would have been $241 billion, $234 billion more than the deficit in the same month last year. As CBO reported, included a comment on the budget result for the year so far as shown below. Uh, see, total outlays up to by, uh, up, sorry, not up to, but up by 4% for the fiscal year to date. Outlays in the first 10 months of fiscal year 2021 were five uh, five thousand eight hundred fifty six billion uh, two hundred twenty five billion uh, or four percent more than during the same period last year. CBO estimates the budgetary effects of federal responses to the pandemic account for the largest increases for some programs. Outlays through this July are higher. And those incurred through last through last Jan, uh, July because those programs have been operating for a large portion of this year than last. And I guess you can kind of see where things are here at tax months. Yep. Uh, yeah. Anyway, now I don't know if you can read that, but anyway, 
And chart above is from Ang Traders of the Away from the Herd as a Marketplace Services. This month we have a, we have changes the color scheme to better represent what is going on in terms of asset markets. The mainstream would have you believe that federal government deficits are bad and surpluses are good. This is a fallacy, as the federal government surplus is the private domestic uh, domestic sector's deficit. Asset markets are located in the private domestic sector, and when the sector experiences a deficit, such as a uh, such as a big drawdown from federal taxes or tariffs. It suffers a net loss of financial assets and the markets go down. So now the private domestic sector surplus is shown in green and the private domestic sector deficit is shown in red. Green, good, red, bad. <laughs> That's a bad this. And you'll see what he's talking about, I suppose. Okay, yeah, there's more green, it looks like, than red, which is good. Okay, that's my mouse. Anyway, uh, let's see. The federal government is the creator of the dollar and has as many and has as many as it cares to create and put into circulation. The federal government is no better or worse off for running either a deficit or a surplus. Its net financial position is unaffected. If you do not believe me, then have a listen to former Fed Chair Alan Greenspan. There is nothing to prevent the federal government from creating as much money as it wants and paying it to someone or somebody. Alan Greenspan, Federal Reserve Chairman. Greenspan, there is nothing to prevent the government from creating as much money as it wants. The federal government can run a deficit indefinitely given that it creates dollars in it as it spends. The private sector, on the other hand, can run out of the dollars and go bankrupt as it only as it is only a user of the currency and it cannot create it. The SPX is a growth uh, logarithm, uh, log oh, man, logarithm, I should say, uh, and greatly climbs upwards like an escalator stare the fiscal flows from the economics largest fiscal agent the federal government as the current as the currency sovereign are largely responsible for the step pattern in august there are two treasury interest payments that will put money into circulation and boost markets in a series of large injections in the meantime, there is a steady infusion of money from the usual federal government outlays with no, ma with no major tax events until September and early November. At the White House, the Democratic, uh, Democratic Infrastructure Bill looks to be near completion and made into law. The present the present value of the bill is about $1 trillion as the inter-party horse trading continues. This is only about 100 billion per year over 10 years, which is not really very much. The much larger 3.5 uh, trillion reconciliation bill that is planned to come after the smaller infrastructure package is, is much more interesting. It will be a massive boost in markets located in the private sector, a private domestic sector. One issue comes up uh, close on the radar now is the federal debt limit raise or suspension. Things are getting tight uh, at the Treasury, and Janet Yellen put out this press release a few days ago. Statement from Treasury uh, uh, Secretary of Treasury Janet L. Yellen uh, on the debt ceiling. You like to read it. Uh, as I said in my letter to Congress on July 23rd, Increasing or suspending the debt limit does not increase government spending, nor does it authorize spending for future budget proposal. It simply allows Treasury to pay for previously enacted expenditures. Failure to meet those obligations would cause uh, irreparable harm to the U.S. Ec economy and the livelihoods of Americans. In recent years, Congress has addressed the debt limits through regular order with a with broad bipartisan support. In fact, during the last administration, Democrats and Republicans came together to do their duty three times. Congress should do uh, should do so again, 
now by increasing or suspending the debt limit on a bipartisan uh, basis. The vast majority of the debt subject to the debt limit was accrued prior to the administration's uh, taking office. This is a shared responsibility, and I urge Congress to come together on a bipartisan uh, basis as it has in the past to protect the full faith and credit of the United States. The spending rate at the federal government is relatively high, as the second table in this article shows. This is due to the highest, uh, higher level and higher than normal COVID-related spending, all a boost to the economy and private sector. The federal government's bank balance at its uh, account at the Fed is dropping fast and a blockage on the creation of new treasuries will cause it to not refill and then comes the prospect of a technical default. There can be no actual default for that reason. Uh, in quotes, a government cannot become in, uh, insolvent with respect to obligations in its own currency. A fiat money system like the ones we have today are, can produce uh, such claims without limit. Again, that's Alan Greenspan, Federal Chairman in 97. Below is the statement of the federal government's bank account uh, at the Fed. Okay, so table one, operating cash balance. Uh, federal Reserve account has, and I guess this is in billions, uh, 466.601 billion today uh, at, that, at that moment, which is on the 5th, uh, which was 505,871. This month, it'd be 459,402. And the fiscal year was 1.781679. Um, now, was this far as the part goes? At the present higher spending rate, the balance could drop to zero in, in rather a short time, uh, even with the Fed making uh, special adjustments. This will be a major political, uh, social, and market event that will take some time to sort out. This will be a very good time to enter the market if there is a big drop as the, this problem will get sorted out and markets will recover uh, lost ground and move on. The problem is akin to a fuel blockage in your car that causes it to sputter. The blockage clears and the car drives on. The Federal Bank, uh, sorry, the Federal Reserve System is like a hydraulic machine. Treasuries absorb bank reserves and control the interest rates within, the, within the, its target range. The debt limit issue means the Treasury cannot issue new Treasury bonds, and thus the Fed cannot buy what is not issued and cannot sell what it does not have. Bank reserves will build up in the uh, financial system. Banks will have access to uh, bank reserves and have to compete for them in the interbank market, and so the interest rate will fall and the Fed will not be able to do anything to stop it. Uh, bank, I'm sorry, bond phase values will allow with, with rally, will rally, the dollar will rally as it will be in short supply given that treasuries are a dollar with a coupon payment. Banks with access, bank reserves will want to use them to invest in other higher yielding assets such as stocks and bonds and so these markets should really be, uh, should really be getting, begin with. Should rally, excuse me, should rally to begin with. Over the medium to long term, a protracted debt and fit limit debate will stop the growth of overall system liquidity, the money supply. A growing uh, economy needs a growing money supply and will not grow without it. The result will be an economic slowdown, dis disinflation, unemployment, and downward asset markets. This would be the time to buy. The Fed continues to uh, quantitative ease at $120 billion per month and has left interest rates where they are. They have a major ja uh, Jackson Hole meeting later this month where more of the same can be expected from all the major central banks attending the meeting. The inflation outlook is benign at best. We have a unique situation with regards to COVID and shutdowns and inflation. The economy, the economy, as we know it, as we know, is made up of sectors. The sectors each have their own share of aggregate demand and the form of purchasing power from customers. Similarly, the sectors have the productive capacity to cater for a small 
must for, for a normal excuse me level of aggregate demand and customer purchasing power. Due to COVID restrictions, whole sectors of the economy were shut down, leisure, accommodations, travel, restaurants, and entertainment, to name a few. The aggregate demand that would normally flow to them was not able to do so. Generally speaking, and with many unfortunate exceptions, aggregate demand as total uh, was maintained via stimulus and relief payments from the federal government, and so the aggregate demand that would normally flow to the shutdown sectors went into when it went in other directions on my sales house renovations cars work at home related items just in the, just name a few the aggregate demand went into net homes and home renovations pc games furniture and all sorts of things the key point is that the demand that went into the sectors not affected or indeed benefiting from the COVID impact did not have the productive capacity to end to cater for the increased level of aggregate demand. And so there was, so there has been some price inflation in these sectors. The inflation is so, is though trans, uh, transitory because the shutdown sectors will reopen and absorb uh, their former share of aggregate demand. And also the other sectors will expand output, output and capacity to, to meet the new higher level of demand, but with a lag. As new capacity takes time to build as go, as COVID enters, uh, sorry, ends and the shutdown sectors get more purchasing power directed at them, the other sectors will suffer some price deflation if there is then excess output and expanded production capacity in excess of demand. Then on top of that are the standard pre-existing neoliberal inflation control measures such as federal government austerity, weakened trade unions, per pernicious labor controls, and higher levels of private debt and precarious working conditions. Okay. I'm actually going to leave it there. Uh, if you want to look more, uh, go to seekingalpha.com slash article slash, yeah, just look, just look for Warren Moser uh, on Seeking Alpha. Uh, let me get out of here. I'd like to thank you for uh, watching, um, and I hope that you do decide to subscribe to YouTube and or support me on um, other platforms. Um, Again, thank you for watching. Uh, I will be having something up written on my my Substack, uh, .substack .com. Um, now what? All right. Uh, actually, this will be mainly be on uh, Odyssey. So look me up on Odyssey. I believe I'm still at uh, GPS uh, GPS News. So look me up there. Uh, thanks for listening or uh, watching out of the way. And I'm hoping that uh, what I gave you was. Um, was educational, uh, acceptable, and uh, support me at Odyssey. And also uh, become a free email subscriber at calvintaylor.substack.com. Thank you again for, for watching and peace out for now.